and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Well, the season has finished now, but as a special bonus, because we enjoyed it so much, here are some of the rounds we didn't have time to fit into the original programmes, along with some of our favourite moments and a few outtakes. I hope you enjoyed them. <laughs> our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? Here's our big board uh, with the six categories. From the categories chosen, I read out an answer and the players have to guess what the question might be. Adam, which category would you like? Transport, please. OK, transport it is. The answer is crazy, loopy and un-British. <laughs> what is the question? Is it, it what is Mohammed al Fayed? <laughs> <laughs> is, is it what is Prince Philip? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, uh, is it who are the arch enemies of Snap, Crackle and Pop? <laughs> What nicknames, what nicknames has Madonna given her children? <laughs> <laughs> is it, if you read the Daily Mail, <laughs> what is everything? <laughs> <laughs> what do you call slapping a bulldog? <laughs> <laughs> I actually know the answer to this one. I think it's what people were saying about the lady who was wearing the crucifix for British Airways, Peter Hayne, people like that. That's absolutely right. Well done, Andy Parsons. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what development airport safety was recently suggested? Further development of oh, airport safety. Uh, right. Tagging, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. it? Yes, yeah. What kind of tagging? The electric tagging. Electric, electric tagging or electronic <laughs> tagging? <laughs> With just a broad pedal block. Get in, get into the departure area. They're, they're just going to employ Jedi's. Just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, electronic tagging, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. As you check in, they would give you an electronic tagging. Let tag. me get this straight. You're not allowed to have your mobile phone on, but they're going to put on some crazy futuristic tracking system. <laughs> Why don't they just jump straight forward to exploding thought callers and have done with it? <laughs> I don't know what, you know, if mobile phones are so dangerous, why don't Al Qaeda just take a mobile phone on the flight with them, turn it on and play Snake, and we're all fucked up? <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. You know, the, the tagging would only work within the airport itself. What's the point of it? Uh, this, no, it? it's like, it's, it's again, He's in solution. Costa Coffee. He's in Costa Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> He's moving to the sock shop. <laughs> 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 it would just be to find out which duty free was particularly popular yeah. for a browser. You know, uh, on September 11, that day, I actually flew from uh, Birmingham to Dublin, like two hours after everything that was going on, and had that thing of, like, suddenly became a detective within the terminal trying to look who was possibly on my flight who might be trying to hijack it. And my sights set on two people in front of me <clears> that were carrying Dubai duty free shopping bags. And I kept my eye on them for the entire flight. I was going to Dubai, Dubai, right, something's going on. Never once did it occur to me that if you were going to hijack a plane and fly it into a building, you probably wouldn't stop for duty-free shopping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now is the time I die in the name of Allah. Oh, you got boss. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of travel, by the way, on the roads, what flaw has been exposed this oh. week in speed cameras? The, uh, oh. if, it's really great yeah. if, you, uh, if you change lanes uh, between two, uh, like, kind of, you know, average speed cameras. If you swap lanes, then they can't detect you. And the manufacturer said, you can do this, but we wouldn't recommend it. It's exactly like when you're at the swimming pool, they go, no bombing. He's turned! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you drive like Richard Hammond, I mean, violent swerve, you're perfectly all right. You'll get away. <laughs> I think that, that, should be, that should be the anti-speeding advert. It should be footage of Richard Hammond trying to remember his own wedding day. <laughs> <laughs> Or was it red? <laughs> Am I married? This morning. We're not even like an oblique <laughs> reference to him. Let alone, there's a line in the sand, right? And you can't even Frankly see just, the line yeah. in the sand. <laughs> You're actually out of sand into like into tropical tundra regions. The <laughs> sand is so. Do you think that is what is wrong with speaking? <laughs> What's wrong with speaking? Oh, no, no, no. Take, I'm taking a second just to enjoy okay, that particular joke. <laughs> 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 Who has had a crash? Any, anyone? Yeah, yeah I've been in a crash. crash. Yeah. 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 Well, you said the worst one. When I was 17, right? I crashed into a snowplow the only day it snowed that year. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to walk up to the, I had to walk up to him, like, doing my best crowd. So, well, how fast do you think we was going? And he was like, well, I'm in a snowplow, <laughs> so I'm guessing I wasn't hurting him. Um, <laughs> you saw that story, though. Did you see the story of the bloke who set fire? Is it a bloke? You know people destroy speed cameras because they hate them so much? Yeah. And there was a bloke who set fire to a speed camera, but he did it from the front. 
And he was really surprised that it had all been filmed. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, no, but it wouldn't have got him unless he struck the match at over 30 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> one of these speed cameras actually earned 80 grand in a year. I was thinking, I would quite like that job. <laughs> <laughs> that a good job. I would quite dance. happily stand there with a flash gun <laughs> in a hedge painted fluorescent yellow <laughs> for 80 grand a year. The next round is called Between the Lines and features Hugh and Frankie. Uh, would you both please make your way over to our press pit? In this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news addressed in the media while the other translates what they really mean. As he prepares to assume centre stage, Frankie, you are Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Thank you, got it right in one. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> and I was so happy with myself, fucked up the rest of the link. Let's do that again. <laughs> You have to think, I'm a dinner jacket. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and then veer off towards the end. <laughs> the worst thing is, I say it at the start of the item, and I can't say it as well as you. <laughs> so now you've really drawn attention to how shite I'm going to pronounce this. <laughs> in this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news addressing the media, while the other translates what they really mean. As he prepares to assume centre stage, Frankie, you're Iranian president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, making a speech. You, you will tell us what he really means. I am Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. <laughs> but you can call me Ted. <laughs> we are developing nuclear power, but our aim is peaceful. We are developing nuclear power, but our aim is Jerusalem. <laughs> We're developing nuclear power which could benefit the West. Have you considered changing your electricity supply? <laughs> Iran has been accused of sponsoring terrorism. We do. <laughs> 50 p a mile. <laughs> the American president is the son of a swine. I hope that one day his body is identified by the teeth marks on my penis. <laughs> I don't like George Bush. <laughs> we are a modern people. At night, I relax by listening to the stones. <laughs> Thudding into the bodies of innocent women. <laughs> I am opposed to nuclear weapons and would like to see reducing numbers. Five. Mark Oaten and his wife were back in the news. What excuse did his wife uh, give for his much publicised visits to Rent Boys? Oh, this was great. She blamed Charles Kennedy. Charles Kennedy was the reason it, they must have got really pissed that night. <laughs> I mean, I've been drunk enough to have a kebab, but never been so drunk that I've turned gay. <laughs> did you yeah. go to a club last night, Mark? Oh, worse than that. <laughs> I suddenly became gay. <laughs> Is the, do you know the, the, the crime in Middle England that Mark Oaten committed wasn't actually going with rent boys, it was simply renting. If you're going to go, <laughs> if you're going to go with a boy, just yeah. why not own your own? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's renting, money. you're just throwing it away. You throw money away. <laughs> throw money away. Um, what, uh, what was Oaten's excuse, by the way? Was it that he liked shaking red boys and he had some spare cash? <laughs> wasn't that? O Oaten's excuse, wasn't it, was that he'd gone prematurely bald. Wasn't that particularly it? Yeah. It is uh, strange. It, I presume it affects people in different ways. I have to say that hasn't been the way it's affected me. I'm not sure, Andy, if it's been... If you've got a guy under there, oh, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> At every moment, he's ready there waiting to service me because the baldness has just driven my self-esteem up the wall. I like the fact that you brought up your own premature baldness stuff. Well, that's, you that's know, very nice. No, well, I don't want to self-effacing. Well, I, no, it's not that self-effacing. I just don't want people to think that I'm naturally bald for my age, which would make me then 57. <laughs> uh, so I'd like them to think it is premature. I've known Darren quite a number of years now. Whenever I look at his career and compare it to mine and it depresses me, I always just think, I'm the same age as him. <laughs> I look at his balding head and I run my fingers through my luscious <laughs> hair and I go, mm, let him have his own show, I don't care, <laughs> I've got my own hair. Think of that as you're watching it next week from your <laughs> sofa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, here we go. Let's have a topic. And the first topic is telecoms. Now, I've got a crap mobile phone, right? It's, and I'm sick of my phone company ringing me up, trying to get me to have an upgrade. Do you want a free upgrade? Do you want a better phone? No, I like my crap phone. Uh, one day, I'll be walking my dog and I'll take it away and say, have a wolf instead. <laughs> it drives me mad. And this guy was determined to make me have this, the Samsung Golden Cock 4000 or something. <laughs> It's like, oh, yeah, you get this phone, you see. You can download TV clips onto it. You're interested in watching TV on your phone? It's like, well, no. <laughs> I've got a TV, right? <laughs> I'm not interested in watching TV on my phone. Same reason I'm not interested in having a piss in my tumble dryer. <laughs> right? Let's have it on the top. The subject is bird flu. Who wants to come in that? Ian. <laughs> Yeah, we do have a bird flu helpline. We do give us advice on what to do in the unlikely event that we encounter a dead bird. And I thought, well, yeah, well what are people doing at the moment? <laughs> oh, look, there's a dead bird. I must rub it in my face. <laughs> Hello, bird flu helpline. <laughs> I think I made a grave error. <laughs> I was walking down the street and I encountered a dead bird. I rubbed it in my face, yeah. <laughs> Is that wrong? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I have spoken to you earlier. <laughs> well, now the kids are playing with it, yeah. <laughs> well done, Ian. Very good. In stone. OK, that leaves me with Andy and Frankie. Let's have another topic. The topic is Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I have this covered. <laughs> Is that your image of Scotland? <laughs> you know that that's three English blokes at a wedding? <laughs> Do you remember years ago when they were making Braveheart, everyone said, oh, it's ridiculous, Mel Gibson playing a Scottish guy. That's not going to be very convincing. And look at him now, an alcoholic racist. <laughs> The most Scottish thing I've ever seen. I was going through a town called Bathgate at about half past 11 at night, and there was a guy pissing <laughs> against the front door. <laughs> he then took out his keys and went inside. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan, and, uh... OK, let's see what's left for Andy. It's education. I am a little disappointed. <laughs> I was hoping to get England as a topic. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, education, you may have seen that in fact our kids are now going to get taught atheism in the classroom. You would have thought that should be a fairly short lesson, wouldn't you? <laughs> Hello, come in. There is no God. <laughs> Same time next week. <laughs> This next round is called Phone In. I'll play the host of a radio phone in programme, interviewing a top guest in the week's news, played by Frankie, while through the performance we'll play different characters ringing in with searching questions. OK? Welcome back mm. to the show. I'm delighted to welcome my special guest, John Prescott. Hello, Dara. Good to have you here, John, with us. <laughs> uh, John, Mr. Prescott, of course, you've had a busy summer. How did they find out about your affair, by the way? Well, basically, uh, the woman I was shagging ended up being the flattest woman in Britain. <laughs> So the newspapers just rang round hospitals asking for women who'd been admitted claiming that a piano fell on them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's open it up to the phone lines. Uh, uh, hello. Line John. one, please. What's John? his number? Hello. This is Ian from Basildon. <laughs> do you mind if I call you John? Yes, I do. <laughs> Could, would you be able to explain to me, because I've never really understood, uh, the rules of croquet? <laughs> Yes, well, basically, it's polo for people who are too fat to get on a horse. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're going to move over to uh, line three there. Oh, I'm line three, am I? Uh, Hello, Mr. Prescott. Uh, Mr Prescott, uh, good to talk to you again. Uh, now, when Teddy Blair uh, retires, he's going to be lecturing the world, making a fortune. When Gordon Brown stops being Chancellor, he'll get directorships in the city. W what are you going to do when you give up politics? Well, I'd resent your tone, to be quite honest. <laughs> I mean, I'm a man of many achievements. Uh, for example, I'm, I'm a 25-stone man 
who's managed to shag a woman on a desk and not break it. <laughs> Why that? did you leave the door open uh, when you were doing that? Was that because you couldn't fit in otherwise? <laughs> no, it's because there was a mirror just behind the door and as I was doing it, I caught sight of myself in the mirror and I winked. <laughs> 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 so what are you going to do when you stop be being in politics? I think at 67 I'm probably going to die. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Let's go to uh, line four here. Yes, hello. Is that Telewest customer support? <laughs> <laughs> what unusual cure for alcohol addiction has been uncovered this week? It, LSD. I know it's, it's LSD is now a cure for alcoholism, <laughs> which is, is going to change the world. I mean, it's going to change tramps. Can you spare any change? I've got a unicorn to feed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wait, Alcoholics don't talk enough pish already. <laughs> I'll tell you why your mother left me, because she was seeing a merman. <laughs> <laughs> and, but LSD was invented by uh, Albert Hoffman, wasn't it? He's the godfather of LSD. Have you heard about him? Yeah, during... He's the man who invented the word psychedelic. Yeah, yeah, but it was great because during World War II, he, uh, had, he self medicated on acid, went for a bike ride, and wrote a diary about it. How fantastic is that? <laughs> Day three, the bike has begun speaking to me. Tomorrow, <laughs> I will make it a bacon sandwich. My accent is still unknown. <laughs> so you, know this, <laughs> you, know this, you know this stuff about um, you know, Channel 5 putting women off uh, having birth, giving birth, <laughs> having children? It's not actually Are you all right? hospitals. <laughs> yeah. well, man been there a couple of times. Right? We're not across the terminology very much here. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. But it's hospitals that have put you off. I had to go last year. I had to go for uh, a colonoscopy. <laughs> as you did. I did. I had to go it's for a true colonoscopy. Story, isn't it? And um, as, it's a very humiliating thing having a colonoscopy. <laughs> and I was lying. I was lying on the trolley. <laughs> With the doctor and the nurse, it was just us in a sort of small operating theatre, and the nurse had a tube like this with a camera on the end of it. I was sedated, just about to go over, under, and just as she, uh, <laughs> just as she, <laughs> over the top, and, uh, I was about to go under, and just as she was about to put the tube where the sun don't shine, she turned to me and she said, I'm a very good friend of your next door neighbour. <laughs> Do you think that next door neighbour was maybe a euphemism she has for the anus? <laughs> Is this suit a, like a, a, like a, just a touch too green? But you're right, yeah. Because it's not a card I've ever really wanted to play over here, you know, the whole thing. It's a bit this. It's funny, it's funny you should say all I've of that. I've got vicious pins and needles. <laughs> Genuinely, yeah. Oh, God. I'm in, I'm in genuinely real trouble. <laughs> Thank God you're not in Romania. There wouldn't be a doctor yeah. for miles. <laughs> it is just so young British sportsman we've come to expect. Really help me later. So, Russell. You're the youngest, Russell. Russell you're, 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 that's you're totally 10, 15 uh, years fitter than any of us here. Yeah. And you're the one whose legs have both fallen asleep from sitting in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Fat Ankle 2006. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the thing on Dara's neck? Can you see it there? The, the, you mean this? There. Thing? Yeah. For the this first thing. six weeks, I thought <coughs> that was draining fluid from his brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stand up challenge. Our random news generator contains a bank of topics. We spin the wheel, and when it's stuffed, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh. <laughs> And the subject is landed on. The winner of the team, I judge, to be able to walk like a human being. Uh, <laughs> and skip or counter or... Yeah. Here we Just go. Just put your foot out. Oh, cheers. Stretch it. Just oh, stretch it. Shit. Go on. <laughs> what are you doing to me? That should do it. Yeah. <laughs> if I ever get famous, this photo is going to get taken and there's going to be a caption near it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man gets bummed by ghosts while two people help. <laughs> Do you know what would be good if I didn't do during this week's uh, opening bit, if I remembered, which anyone who saw the show last Thursday, uh, that the camera is already rolling before it comes to me, so I shouldn't dance along to the music <laughs> like I <expected> <laughs> <laughs> I only it has me going... <laughs> <laughs> we now play a round called Newsreel. We'll play in a recent piece of news footage featuring some of the world's major figures and ask Hugh to provide a commentary. OK, Hugh, this week you'll have a royal theme. Here we go. Oh, here comes Her Majesty the Queen, resplendent in a, in a curtain. <laughs> Good 
walking past one of the many Coke machines. She's decided it must be installed in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> the Duke of Edinburgh, very fond of impressions. That, <laughs> that was a, a dirty old man. <laughs> oh, the line-up. Of course, the point of these is to meet foreign dignitaries. That's um, President someone or somewhere with suspiciously dark hair for a man <laughs> of his age. Tony Blair, of course, will at this stage urge the Duke of Edinburgh not to insult the many dignitaries <laughs> or be racist with them. There he goes, he's saying, they may be foreign, but that doesn't make them bad or wrong. <laughs> Who's next? Oh, it's, it's Gerhard Schroeder. <laughs> Another man with suspiciously dark hair. Of course, he doesn't use hair dye. He's never gone grey in spite of his age of 107. <laughs> the moment coming, Prince Philip's going to beat him. Will he be able to stop being racist? No. <laughs> he... And now, here are the reservoir presidents. <laughs> President Pink of Russia. Oh, and finally, of course, the team photo. <laughs> Um, the Queen dressed differently, of course, because she is the goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> and well done, the points go to here there. On travel news uh, of the of the greatest travel story of the week was Tina the tortoise. Uh, Tina the tortoise <laughs> lost a leg, so they attached uh, a rear wheel to the back of Tina's shell. That's the tortoise equivalent of Davros, the master of the Daleks. <laughs> Tortoise comes to die, that's going to muck up archaeologists in thousands of years' time, isn't it? <laughs> we don't remember evolution producing this one. <laughs> and then what happens if that tortoise is set upon and someone steals the wheels and you find it up on bricks? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the hare is going to feel cheated? He's not going to go for his nap now, is he? <laughs> Do you think they've got the speed worked out? Because presumably the wheel could go an awful lot faster than him. He could oh, just find himself in the wrong gear. I, I, I don't think it's a motorised wheel. I think it's just a little wheel. He's a tortoise hot rod. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> also, he's, not he's, he's not on night. He can press nitro and there's a big engine <laughs> blast in the back. Ah, little <laughs> legs going like that. The thing is, he's actually got a blue light underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he low, low jacks as well? Yeah. He's going on, shh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Tina. Yeah. He's going on, shh. Yeah. What's, what's his name? Is it Tina? Tina. Tina's Her name Tina. is Tina. There's no way that Tina's going to be able to hide from people she doesn't like anymore. You know, because before you can hide in your shell. Oh, that could be anyone. Tina, we know it's you. You've got a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave, how are you doing? Not bad. I think the other tortoises It's a very, very complex social network that tortoises yeah. are. Yeah. 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 Every time the thing reverses, it's going to go beep. <laughs> 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 to be honest, it's going to make fuck all difference to that tortoise. <laughs> you, you said they doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> it barely moves anyway. They're going to put it in a box at Christmas and it'll die. <laughs> <laughs> so well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Frankie, for steamrolling our gentle whimsy there. For taking our sweet little commentary about Tina and how this has changed her life, and just going, Tina will die like the rest of us. Tortoises don't hibernate; they live to one. Basically, it's what I've discovered. Well, just going by Blue Peter. No, they don't. They I remember reading the story. They live for years. Not the ones that Frankie has. Christmas time again. <laughs> Daddy, I They're loved him! Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You've got to get used to the concept of death, Pat. Uh, <laughs> Uncle Frankie, can you get me a frisbee? In a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but does this mean, though, Jeez. if one of the parents accidentally Tina dies? Right. <laughs> Do they have to go to a pet shop, yeah. buy a similar-looking tortoise, <laughs> get rid of the yeah. leg, <laughs> stick another wheel on the corner? Just that they're not supposed to be put in a cardboard box full of hay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe their natural environment is different than a cardboard box. Because yeah. <laughs> they generally die. <laughs> you keep trying to teach us that tortoises die, and we refuse to believe you. <laughs> we think they go on forever, Frankie. You're going to bring one in next season and go, look at it, it's not moving Let's anywhere. Let's get a show pet next season, right? Yeah, yeah. I guarantee you it'll die in the middle of episode one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And by the way, before we start uh, headlines uh, in round one of the first series, I'd introduce you to the Mock the Week giraffe, who will just be wandering around the studio randomly <laughs> for the rest of the season. Hello, <laughs> Necky. <laughs> 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 and then you'll just 
see him behind there, just slowly, and then bang! Like to the middle of scenes we'd like to see. Ted Gerard will come slamming through the screen. Man. He what? laughed, but that would be a better show. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Who gives a fuck about the news, really? <laughs> It'd be but, great to see a bonobo chip rip through that screen <laughs> during one of the stand-up bits. <laughs> I'll tell you what I think about the government. Oh, hello! <laughs> Tearing the contestant's limb from there. Just there. Frankie's, Frankie's like that. <laughs> no, Frankie! <laughs> They've got a lamb. <laughs> the first subject is exam questions that were rejected. A lot of people say that the exams are too easy. Is the answer A, yes? <laughs> or B, David Beckham? <laughs> With illustrations, describe the Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> A virgin train is travelling at 120 miles per hour between London and Manchester. What time will it be cancelled? <laughs> if all PE teachers are paedophiles, discuss. <laughs> <laughs> if the world is heating up at two degrees per decade, what is the point of anything? <laughs> Spell Mississippi without looking at how we've spelt it in the question. <laughs> Two cars are speeding. One is being driven by a black man. <laughs> Which one will be stopped? Do you think kids spend too much time with their PlayStation? Answer cross, triangle, <laughs> circle or square. Check the box A, B or C to receive the grade A, B or C. <laughs> Sex education practical. Report to me in the stationery cupboard. <laughs> if I add one eighth to one sixteenth, how stoned will I be? <laughs> Can you master this phrase? Do you want fries with that? <laughs> there we go. This is our little topic. Famous last word. Stingrays love foreplay. <laughs> Charles? Charles? What are you doing with that pillow? <laughs> I'll bet you I can jump that ticket barrier. <laughs> no, don't shoot me! It's Yoko you want! <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, the closer it gets, the more it looks like a piano. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, Zidane! <clears throat> your mum's a slag! <laughs>